Hey, good morning. Um, glad you could be with me again today or afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this. And so I've got something today that I want to I want to share with you that uh, uh, I think is really uh, maybe applies to all of us. And uh, <clears throat> it, it really has to do with uh, with battle and 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 you know in our, our physical battle and and the battles that we have in our heart and our minds and so um you know i was um i was thinking about the other day that uh we were at uh we were down where we typically go to walk around this lake and and there were <clears throat> a group of men and a group of women two different kind of areas there and they were they were you know obviously muslim of faith and and when we walked by um I didn't really pay too much attention to the, you know, to the groups, but I noticed that, uh, you know, Christy noticed that one of the uh, one of the men was, uh, you know, giving her a, a look of judgment, I guess, and maybe in that, uh, he, you know, she wasn't dressed like um, uh, their women, and so, you know, it, it kind of kind of hurt my heart a little bit and wanted to do something physical about that, and so. Um, you know, and that's that's really, I think, the, a, a carnal reaction to things, and 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 I think that that's that's true of all of us, and it it absolutely is true in that uh, we all have carnal reactions to uh, things in this life because we have we still live in this flesh. So uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that, and that um, we have, uh, you know, Paul Paul faced the same thing in in, in the book of Corinthians when he wrote to the Corinthian church who was uh, at that time involved in some sin that he wrote them about and and he wrote them and he and he uh, rebuked them pretty um, uh, pretty hard in the scripture in the in the letter that he wrote to them and then I, I think that Paul and in, in, uh, you know in in his appearance evidently Paul in his appearance was somewhat different in that when he appeared to him you know he was he was mild and gentle and and full of uh, full of the love of Christ working through him and and so he, he, he when he wrote back to him in the second in the second letter uh, I think that there was something that said that uh, maybe there was a difference in the way he acted both in his letters and and the way he was he, because he he wrote to him and he said this is where I think that you you see me or that you view me he says for his letters they say are weighty and powerful but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible and so the 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 whole point of this is that sometimes uh, we tend to look on the outward appearance of things. We, t we look in the physical. We look in the, on the flesh of things. And so I think there's, uh, there's a battle that we all have in that we, we look at uh, what's going on around us in the physical sense and we seem to judge you know, what, how God is acting in our life based upon really what we see and not what the, what the truth is. Um, the, the, over in the fourth chapter of Second Corinthians, uh, beginning of verse 16, it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for a moment, worketh, worketh, in, worketh in us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. And then this is the part I wanted you to hear. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but which the things which are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary, and the things which are not seen are eternal. And so we have to, you know, focus on the fact that this is the things around us are temporary, and everything that everything that we do in this world, everything that's around us is is all here in, in a temporary sense, and we're here in a, as as pilgrims and strangers in this world, and that uh, this is this is not our home. This is just where we reside today. And so I think that what, what the point that I'm trying to get to in, in this message for today is that uh, our heart and our, our focus, uh, although that uh, everything around us uh, affects us in terms of how we, you know, how we feel and, and our emotions and, and everything else, what we have to do is we have to begin to understand that, that our battle is not with the things, not the physical things here. And one of the major battles that we have is 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 not again. It's not with it's not with people. It's not with uh, it's not with uh, things of you know the circumstances or or uh, events of this of this life. I know that you know as we read things in the in the newspaper, especially against our you know enemies and and even even within within our own country, 
Uh, I think there's a general sense that, you know, you want to rise up and you want to do something physically about it. You want to, you know, you want to arm yourself. You want to do things with, to, to take back. And, and I think that that's, you know, that's, that's a natural reaction to those things. But the thing that I believe that we have to do as Christians is that we have to begin to, to renew our minds and our, and our hearts and as to the truth of, of God's Word. Uh, Christy showed me a thing the other day that, that was on a church um, uh, sign outside and and it said pray for for president obama and then at below that says that he be replaced and i know that that a lot of times that and that we don't agree with what's going on with with our uh, uh president and our leaders and, and 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 by far that we have some men and women that are in government that that do things opposite of what is true and righteous but the, the first part of that sign I, I really appreciate it. And I think that that's what we have to do as Christians is and instead of, uh, of uh, constantly complaining about uh, what's going on there, we, be, we need to begin to pray for those people in, in government. And I think that's what uh, the, the Scripture teaches us is pray for those because God is appointing those people. God has put all those people in place and it's, it's our duty to pray for them and to uh, just ask God to plant righteousness in their hearts. And that's, that's the best thing that we can do. And, uh, uh, you know, criticizing and, and all of those things, uh, although that's, that, you know, we might feel in our heart that the most important things we can do is, is pray for those in authority and uh, pray that uh, God would just bless them because God, God is uh, sovereign and God is not, uh, you know, God hasn't lost control and, and God's, you know, not uh, far off that he's not seeing what God knows exactly what's happening. And as, as we as his people need to, you know, become warriors in that fact. So uh, the scripture I want to get to today is, is this scripture. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our, warf- the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations or arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so that's really that's what he's talking about. So uh, again, to kind of uh, reiterate what he just said here, he said, you know, our weapons are, are not carnal. They're not fleshly. They're not on the, the exterior. That's not how we're, we're to battle in this world. He says, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And one of the, one of the, the main strongholds we as Christians battle every day is the strongholds of those thoughts in our hearts and our minds. And, and what I'm talking about is that, uh, as you know, is that our minds some can, can cause us to, to have all kinds of, of thoughts about, you know, uh, you know uh, what, where is God and, and, you know, what is he doing here and has he abandoned me? Is, you know, do we need to, um, you know, do something in our own, in our own flesh and our own power to bring about a result that we feel like is, uh, you know, that needs to take place? So we have, we have a... Uh, situation in our life that we feel like, all right, I've been praying to God, and you know it's just not happening fast enough, fast enough, and I need to I need to go about doing it in my own way, and I think that's one of the battles that we have to to um, to take every thought into the obedience of Christ, and how do we do that? Well, we have to do that, and He says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. The 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 battle that the the one um, instrument of battle that we have. Uh, the one weapon that we have is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so what we have to do is we have to take the Word of God and we have to apply it every day in our life and in our hearts and our minds to renew those things to the truth of, of God, bringing every thought into captivity. So that the, the Scripture teaches us the, the, the truth of how God views us, of how God works in our life, and, and who we are in Christ. And we have to maintain that. And that's a battle that we have every day with our flesh because our flesh wants to act out in our own way. Our flesh wants to act out in our own wisdom and our own intellect. And that's, that's not the way that we're going to be successful. That's not the way that we're going to serve and battle with God as His warriors. But as His warriors, we have to do it according to uh, the truth that is in uh, God's Word. And so on the same thing in, in our military, and, and many of you may have served in the military and, and you're familiar with these things, is that 
um, is that when, when you go into the military, what they're going to do is they're going to transform you from the civilian and thinking like a civilian to begin to think like a soldier, begin to think like a Marine, begin to think, uh, you know, as, as anyone who, who serves in the military and what their job is, you begin, your mind is renewed to think like that. And as you think, then you begin to act on those things. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as we renew our mind to the Scripture and re renew our mind to the truth that, that God is sovereign, that God loves us, that God desires for us the, uh, only good things, then we can begin to act on those things. And begin reminder that although we look around us and we feel like there's chaos, we feel like that there's confusion, we feel like that, that God has maybe turned away from where he's at, is that we renew our minds to know that God, no, has not done that. God is still in control. God is in control of every circumstance. God is in control of everything that we're doing. And although we may feel like he's late in answering us, he's always right on time. And so um, that's, I think there's, a, there's an importance of that. And that's really uh, where I wanted to get to also in, in the uh, eighth chapter of Romans as a reminder. And, and so as we, <clears throat> as we renew our minds, we have, to, we have to actually do it through the Word of God in that we, as we read it, we, we understand His promises because the Bible says that all the promises in Christ Jesus are yea and amen. In other words, they're, they're the truth, and that's, that's all there is to it. So he says here in Romans chapter 8, he says... Um, um, <clears throat> for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, were the called of Christ. Whom he called, he also justified, were justified in the righteousness of, of Christ Jesus. And that's, uh, again, that's another truth right there, is that justification, our righteousness is of Christ alone. It's not of our works. It's not of how we, uh, you know, how we uh, are obedient or disobedient, although we want to be obedient in all things. Our obedience and our disobedience don't uh, fluctuate our righteousness. Our righteousness is always solid in Christ Jesus. For whom he called, he justified. Whom he justified, him also he glorified. And what shall we say to these things? If these things are true, what shall we say? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up freely, uh, how shall he not also give us all things? What shall, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God who justifies. Uh, who is he that condemns? It is God, it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, and is even at the right hand of God, ever making inter intercession for the saints. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? What shall separate us? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Can any of these things separate us from the love of Christ? In other words, is there anything in this world that can take away Christ's love for us. Nothing. There's not anything because Christ, even though in all these circumstances we feel like, well, God may not love me or God's mad at me because this thing is happening to him. That's not the truth. The truth is that in all things, His love for us never changes and that He knows exactly where we are and He has us in circumstances and situations to bring about a desired result and that we trust Him because we know that in nothing His love is separated from us. And it says, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep to the slaughter. And nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So He loves us in all ways, in all, in all circumstances. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, uh, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. So God always loves us. God always desires the best for us. God is always working to bring about uh, the best in our life, to purify us, to, uh, to begin to uh, uh, put us in a place that we can we can uh, be effective for him, and so as as and so instead of us bringing about and, and having the thoughts of well you know I, I don't know where God's at in this or I you know I, I think that maybe uh, you know I missed something what God is always in control of those things, 
and our thoughts are to say, our thoughts are to say, Lord, maybe I don't understand, but I'm thankful for where you have me. You know, in, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And so we're, we're with, with prayer and with thanksgiving is that we, we just, we thank God and we thank Him for where we're at and we bring about our petitions to Him and say, Lord, uh, just, just bring about your will in our life. And so, <clears throat> again, the weapons are for, of our warfare are not carnal. So whatever it is in your life, whether you're, you know, you're, you're trying to uh, bring about uh, changes in, in, in a situation, circumstance, uh, whether it is that you, you know, there's, there's, maybe there's anger, anger towards someone or something, is that we've got to let those things go and we've got to remember that God is in control and that, that he, has, he has loved us and He has uh, sent Christ to die for us, and Christ is at the right hand of God, ever making an intercession for us, and so that we can live a life of, of truth, and that lo- the, the love of Christ can flow through us, and our mind be renewed to the truth that God is sovereign, that He is in control, and that He does, uh, he does know where we're at. So uh, I, hope this is, I hope this has helped today. Uh, my prayer is that, that our minds would be... Uh, uh, in, in trusting God, and that's that's really the just. That's what the Scripture says: the just, the justified shall live by faith. And that's really the only way that we can uh, that we can please God is by placing our faith in Him. Um, for those who um, uh, believe God must or, or love God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who faithfully faithfully uh, seek Him. So. Be blessed, have your mind renewed in Christ, and know that that Jesus does love you, and that Jesus desires the very best in everything. God bless you, my beloved.